Tomorrow? IT. Fourteen grams. Millions and millions of mice. It's hard for us city folk to imagine the ground six inches thick with furry grey bodies scampering in every direction. But that's just what country folk in parts of New South Wales are facing every night. At dusk in Gunnedah, in the state's northwest, the mice take over. It's the worst mice plague in living memory, and the farmers have become so desperate they're trying anything to stop their lives from being ruined. When you see just how bad the problem is in this next story, we're sure you'll understand some of the extreme ways in which the farmers are fighting back. Tim Klugas reports. One man's answer to the mouse plague, a flamethrower and a few buckets of petrol. It's an indication of just how desperate some farmers in the Gunnedah district have become. They've endured two months of the worst mouse plague in the district's living memory. Two months of devastated crops. Now David Trigus is fighting back. David, most people watching that would say what you've just done is cruel. Yes, well I sort of gave it some thought actually before I she started and I had... Uh, I, I had been using a lot of poison around the house. I probably put out about 200 kilos of talon, I reckon, around it. And all I'd done was kill one of my good dogs. So I decided that, that all the poison was out. So, and then one day I happened to walk around the silo there and I could see all the mice congregating. And I thought, well, it'd probably be a quick, efficient way with just one or two gallons of petrol and hit them. And it'll be over in a matter of seconds. It seems to work very effectively. You don't think it's cruel? No, no, not really, because they all die almost instantly, actually. The alternative is poison. The Department of Agriculture's recommended poison is bromodialone, an anticoagulant, which means the mice will die from internal hemorrhaging over 10 or 11 days. A slow, painful death. There are no kind or gentle alternatives during a plague. If anyone had doubted that there is indeed a mouse plague here in the Gunnedah area, they just have to walk along any of these fields at night and I'll see what the people are complaining about. It's a living sea of mice. There are thousands of mice here. There's been some grain spilt here at some stage and they're feasting on it. You can't walk anywhere without walking on at least five, six, seven dozens of mice. It's, 
it's impossible to believe for a person from Sydney, but this is what these people are living with, and this is what they're complaining about. They just want some sort of help. These scenes are repeated every night throughout the plague-stricken area. Apparently nothing is safe from the seemingly cute, harmless little creatures. Crops are consumed at an incredible rate, but at the same time farming equipment left out at night is ruined. It seems the mice have developed a taste for electrical wiring, and in fact for anything not bolted down. It's with scenes like this that the farmers hope to convince the state government that they are in the grip of a disaster and therefore deserve disaster relief, the same as provided during floods or droughts. But so far, Agriculture Minister Jack Hallam has refused to visit the plague-stricken district. I've made direct approaches to Mr Hallam, uh, requesting assistance, not in the form of a gift, uh, not in the form of an interest-free loan even, just a long-term, possibly a low-interest loan that we can carry us over. But um, I haven't been able to speak to Mr Hallam personally. I've offered him to come up here. Uh, he could land at a light strip in the middle of this area and I would have taken him wherever he wanted to go and looked at it and then let him make his decision. But not one uh, politician has come into this area to look at what damage has been done. Why won't they just appear here? Why won't they come and, and look at it? assess the damage and then say, well, look, I'm sorry, it's not worth, you know, doing anything about it. You haven't got the damage. Uh, I think we'd, be tend to, uh, we'd tend to accept that. But when they just won't come near us, not one will come near us, uh, it's pretty weak. It doesn't speak much for any government at all. And if the night scenes are not enough to convince you, the dawn sheds a new light on the disaster. Everywhere you go, you can see the havoc wrought by the mice. John Strang lost some of the early part of his winter sunflower crop because of mice and he was expecting more losses in his late harvest but he wasn't prepared for what did happen. Uh, this remaining 300 acres is 100% wiped out. Um, there will be no return on this whatsoever. Um, our total loss for the year was 500 tonnes of sunflower which at $300 a tonne comes out at $150,000. This is the sunflower head. Normally they should be in all these empty holes, row after row, nice, fat, plump. Um, sunflower seed full of oil. As you can see, there's absolutely nothing there. There's not one seed in the whole head. There probably should have been 10,000 in that head. John Strang's story is typical of the problems faced daily by the farmers of the area. Most have stored wheat on their properties, ready for the late winter and early spring sowing. Mice have already infested much of that wheat, rendering it useless. The alternative is planting early and risking crop failure. And even then, there's no guarantee the mice won't dig up the weed that has been planted. Even stored hay isn't safe. These bales will have to be burnt because no cattle or horses will eat them now. But the mice haven't stopped at the paddock fence. They've invaded the domestic front, making life a misery. Every night we've had a, a few mice in our bed. But this one particular night, I was asleep for about two or three o'clock in the morning and uh, a ma mouse bit me on the hand three times and made it bleed. What did it feel like when the mice was It was fighting? like a red hot coal and I let out a, a scream and my husband jumped up and thought that I'd, something was really wrong with me and I said, a mouse has bitten me and he said, oh don't be so silly, he said, uh, I said, well, turn the light on, and there was blood all over my hand. Farmers have tried all sorts of tricks to keep their homes mice-free. Homemade traps are popular, and even the local pub has installed an ultrasound device. Ultimately, rain seems to be the only answer to the plague. It would drown those mice that stay underground, and any reaching the surface would die when the cold night air struck their wet fur. And while the farmers pray for rain, they add another request. Please make it rain, and make it soon. The loss in this mouse plague at the moment will cause hardship in the area. It will cause problems, but we will survive. Uh, if the plague carries over and eats our wheat crop, our coming wheat crop, there will be a disaster, a widespread disaster. Uh, in the last four years, we've run at a loss situation three out of the four years. Uh, this can only carry on for a certain time. Um, we've had, had the drought, two, two sections of the drought and the flood. Uh, there are limits to what we can take. Tim Klugas, the reporter, and Ray Raab, the cameraman. Well, we contacted Agriculture Minister Jack Hallam 
and were told he had no plans to visit the Mouse Plague District. Allen, during a visit to Narrabri last night, said the payment of compensation would create too much of a precedent. It's a very tricky one, you know, I mean, we've got striped rust and that's a biological problem and we had the lucinated and that was a biological problem and, you know, the mouse plague uh, is too, but we're constantly monitoring it and uh, uh, as it develops, we will be reviewing progress.